worth mentioning, Matt, that you know, from the, the maybe part that we got to see Booker T the year before, of course, was in the invasion angle, and he he come out at the end. But in terms of where Booker T was in this roster, like coming from a WCW heavyweight champion, uh, where he was here was a, a completely different end of the spectrum, wasn't it? As we see the Rock in the uh, in the mist as well. Yeah, I mean. He was kind of one of the top talents coming over in the invasion kind of angle, but the way they treated him, you wouldn't have thought so, would you, really? Mm. Uh, and it's quite surprising, because he did go on to make quite a name for himself in WWE. It just took a while to really take off for him. Yeah. Fascinating. Another big star. You know, talk about the roster they've got here, Matt. Now we see The Rock on our screen. Um, you know, it's crazy, the, the roster that they had here. But... You can see why they did the brand split at this point. It made perfect sense here. Um, no doubt yeah. about it with, with the amount of talent that they had. And, you know, key talent on each show um, in, in a lot of ways with all this. Yeah, even people like Goldust, you know, that he's, he's a great talent. And, and to, even to the fact where today he's still used like by the WWE in, mm-hmm. in TV programming. So, yeah. you know... It's, even smaller talent like that is still like still at a high level back then. Yep. Right. Well, I think what we're seeing here is a uh, Booker T is about to be absolutely squashed by the Rock in <laughs> kind of verbal spat. As, uh... Yeah. I mean, it's always been hard enough actually to go toe to toe with the Rock on the mic anyway. Um, so you kind of know that if you was going to get into a verbal battle, it's not going to end well. Um, yeah. The only one that, that really stands out for me is Jericho. Well, I, uh, he really did stand his ground, and that is one memorable debut that yeah, they had yeah. there for Jericho when they, when they went through that whole section. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably one of the best debuts I've seen WWE do um, when he came out as an entrance. <laughs> But yeah, like, like Matt said, it's uh, Gold Dust been around for such a long time. Uh, and you think of his his commitment. Of course, he came back with the whole WCW thing as well. Because uh, at the time he was there, he was over there at the time. Uh, he'd left. WWE. Yeah, and it always left uh, kind of a shame when you look at people like that, and they're always often overlooked, and they've been there for so long. You know, even since the eighties, and you know, and it's, it's it's an incredible long time to go in such a physical kind of business. Um, and to work in WWE, even if you're not at the top level of WWE, that's saying that you're the one of the best wrestlers in the world, mm-hmm. actually being in the company. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, and and to go today, it's so rare when you see someone going into their fifties who's been working all the way through, like from the eighties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Definitely. Think about that. But again, something when, you know, even these dialogues that are happening now, and I, I do recommend people that are at home to uh, to turn this stuff up, that you will see a lot of difference between the mic work here to the mic work we get today, <laughs> I feel, um, with being comfortable and knowing the character that you are, which is something that's really missing today um, in, in a lot of ways. And When you look at this, you, you know, you, you think, this is, I know that The Rock is an exceptional talent, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of the guys at this point, Matt, were not overly scripted as what we see today, where they're, they're all saying the same words, like everyone has to say the universe or, you know, universal champion. You can't just say it's my belt anymore. You have to make these key words stand out, who, whoever you are, which I think is a real, it just drives me mad. I always roll my eyes when can kind of easily know who's reading off of a script before they've come out and I, I really dislike that uh, but but here Matt was a, a lot more sort of like the wild west I guess where people were just sort of kind of going along with it like they had some bullet points but for the for the most part it was you know go out and, and just just hit those points but be creative in between yeah I find that the most best way to deal with this kind of situation um, 
it, it definitely feels more natural mm-hmm. to have someone and go out there and just make it up off the top of their head. Because, like I said, when you when you're reading off a script, it, it definitely feels it. Because these guys, foremost, are athletes. They're not actors. You know, mm-hmm. they're not trained in drama schools and all that. How to read lines the best. So it's best to just go out there and let them be themselves. Yeah. Well, we now get the King and the Ring uh, finals match, which of course is between Brock Lesnar and Rob Van Dam. Um, man, when you when you look at Brock Lesnar here, Matt, I mean this guy was jacked and ready, no doubt about it. When you look at the, the size of that guy, his neck seems to be much yeah. bigger then than it is now. But uh, going yeah, up, we mentioned it many times about him, don't we? Just just what kind of natural and mm. it's, it's not an insult when you call Brock Lesnar a freak because no. he is a freak in nature you know yeah. you, you're just born with that kind mm. of size you you can't really learn it you can't really train for it um, and you, you do get bigger when you do the weights but you just don't get that big you know he's natural yeah well we see RVD coming out the Intercontinental Champion the current um, and again um, you know at, at this time Matt I, I even at this point I remember watching this and um, I was really behind RVD winning this. I thought he was going to win. My brain and my heart both told me that. Um, I did not think they were going to elevate Brock that fast. I thought they would do some sort of ending where, you know, to protect Brock, but RVD was the guy that was going to go on um, to, to, the, to the next bit. But, um, you know, obviously, um, when, when we go through this, but, I mean... Who would your uh, Who would you have been? Someone? Would you have been a Brock uh, guy at this point? Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I think I would have. I'll, this is difficult to say because, as a fan, I would like RVD because he's like the face and he's the one that you get behind, and he's been putting in some good performances, and you like the moves that he does, so that gets you to like RVD. Sure. But there was no denying at this point that the way they were marketing Brock as the next big thing. And the dominating displays that he'd been putting on, that you know he was kind of destined for greatness. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, I guess at the time though, I, I would have been torn a little bit here because you know I, I would have thought like Brock had the potential to actually go places, but mm-hmm. I would have been wanting RVD. I would have thought. Yeah, I love these uh, the style of these two it seems to match up really well. Mm-hmm. That sort of uh, agile guy against uh, the the pure strength of Brock Lesnar. Yeah, that guy was a freak of nature, no doubt about it. I mean, he, the thing with Brock Lesnar that really um, got my attention more than anything was just the way he used to beat up his opponents in such different ways that I hadn't seen before um, for, for such a long time. Like, I mean, imagine someone like Brock uh, being built for sort of Hogan back in the day, how that would have gone, you know? Like a monster, they would have lap, lap, lapped this stuff up, wouldn't they? Like literally, this would have been Vince's dream come true um, to have someone like him. Yeah, I mean, like, and as we talk about Brock many times, and we say, you know, just what a naturally gifted athlete he was, and you know, it's just because you can't really learn these things. And when we talk about the UFC a few times, like we had before, and we say when he went to the UFC, he was still making history. Yeah. I think like it says something when you go in there and they don't have your glove size in mm. the UFC. They have to custom make your gloves. Like I think it was like 4XL, yeah. like the size of his hands. Yeah. That, you can't train to get hands that big, <laughs> surely not. Imagine them just hitting you in the face. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, you know, the way that... Brock just manhandles him. <laughs> just crazy. <laughs> so nobody's business. <laughs> so agile as well. He takes that slam and just pops up onto his feet. Yeah. He totally like squashes the mips like big men are slow because he was like one of the fastest guys is when you're putting off like 450 splashes it says something in itself mm-hmm. yeah I think when he when it come time to when it, whenever you watch him he's done it a few times in this match when he when he goes to apply a move he's very fast like he's slow and then he goes very quick um, and that's, that's one of the key things with him so it's like he's a threat all the time 
um, to your opponent. But, you know, that's one of the cool things about Brock as well at this time, is he, he kind of sort of made me, like, enjoy the sort of having wrestling as the sort of forefront as well, like making it a little bit more realistic that this guy could literally do this stuff to you, um, the way he went about his business. Like, the, the, he didn't tend to do things just for the sake of it. It was, like, literally to hurt somebody. Um, and, and everything that he did looked like it was going to cause some damage um, that was going on. So, you know, backing him, backing him up in that corner. I always think of Rhino when he'd done that and got so badly hurt when he'd done that spot into the turnbuckle. It's kind of cool though, like, you know, when people say, oh, Brock doesn't, like, did he ever sell that well? But I mean, you look at him in these matches, mate, he, he's kind of selling as much as he's giving, isn't he, in a lot of ways? I mean, like, some of this stuff RVD's doing is not, uh, it's not any small stuff, is it? No, I, I would have never said that Brock was terrible at selling. Um, it's just the kind of style he works, isn't it? Yeah. He's supposed to be the monster heel. He's supposed to be hard to knock yeah, down. He's supposed to be hard to hurt. You can't have him, you know, being a cowardly heel. It just wouldn't work. It would no. It would be stupid to do it with Brock uh, in a lot of ways. RVD's just like a, a weapon, isn't he? Just like an arsenal of weapons he's going to give you. Different things he could yeah, do with I mean, his body. He's, RVD's one of those guys that could probably work with anybody on the roster at this mm -hmm. time as well. And it was definitely, probably maybe even harmful to him, <laughs> the fact that he was so versatile, that he wasn't actually a specialist in anything, but actually so versatile in everything else that he did. Mm -hmm. It kind of maybe hindered his progress a little bit in WWE. Sure. Well, Heyman just getting involved there, nearly backfired on him, didn't it? Things like roll up. Yeah. Wow, massive F5 there. Why you caught him? And there we go. King of the Ring 2002, Brock Lesnar. What did uh, what did you make of that that as a finals, Matt? Was that sort of everything you expected there between these two? Uh, <laughs> Short and well, sweet. I can say it was definitely a uh, a sudden finish there. Um, I didn't see it coming, uh, so yeah, but it was good. I, I enjoyed that match. I thought they worked well together, um, and it's not the kind of final I would have been expecting. Um, especially if they said like this would be the last King of the Ring, then I would be thinking, nah, surely not. Huh. Not with all the great history. There's got to be like at least ten more. Come on, please give us ten more. But you know, Brock is a great way to finish up this history, kind of make a moment. I know they had other one, other King of the Rings, but not to this kind of standard. Not a champ, not of a caliber of winner like Brock Lesnar is. Yeah. Yeah, so this would be uh, the, one of the biggest platforms for him to go on, no doubt about it. But Brock would do a lot of things in his first year. Um, he would go on, obviously. He, he did. I'll, I'll point it out there, Matt, that he did go on and face RVD again um, at Vengeance a month later before he fought The Rock uh, at SummerSlam. And, of course, he would win that. Uh, and at the time, he was the youngest uh, WWE champion at the time. There's Triple H coming out, another star to add to this huge, debtful roster. Um, and and beyond that, Matt, of course, Brock would then go on and face... Um, would face. Th this is the moment I think you were talking about, Matt, in fact, with Nash and Shawn Michaels when all this was oh, going yeah. on, and they were trying to get him to join, weren't they? Yeah. See, and, yeah, because the internet was not what it was back then, you know? No. Um, you didn't want to sit around waiting an hour to find out a little bit of information on how Triple H and sure. Kevin Nash are getting on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so seeing something like this is huge. Yeah, Xbox, big show. Again, look at us. Look at the talent that we've got in front of us, Matt. Like mm. this, 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 sh this King of the Ring has shown me like, wow, this is what WWE had at one time. <laughs> as far as name power was going. Um, but yeah, going back to Brock Lesnar, yes, he, he would face The Undertaker twice and beat him in Hell in a Cell that year. Uh, he then, of course, loses his title against The Big Show, uh, of all people. 
uh, with Heyman screwing him over, but then would win uh, the Royal Rumble in his first year, Matt, and and then go on to his first WrestleMania in the main event uh, against <laughs> Kurt Angle. I mean, it's uh, it it's I don't think there I don't think there's a better year 